Hey, what's up guys, Soldier Knows Best here. So 2020 is here, and I think this year is going to be a crazy, crazy good year for smartphones. No, I do not think that we're at peak smartphone just yet, but I think we're gonna be seeing some phones come out with a powerhouse list of features, and then also we're gonna be seeing some phones that come out at really aggressive price points that are still gonna be really good phones. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about some of the phones that I'm looking forward to the most in 2020, and let's jump into it with the first lineup of phones that I think we'll be seeing first, and this is going to be the Galaxy S20 series of phones. So we could be seeing three main versions of this phone, the S20, the S20 Plus, and the S20 Ultra. And these phones could be bringing features like the ability to be able to record video at 8K at 30 frames per second, which is insane. And then also too, on the Ultra, we could see a 108 megapixel primary camera. And then also with the telephoto camera on that phone, that could have their 100 times space zoom feature inside of that, which is gonna be cool to use. And then also we could see a great battery life starting at 4,000 milliamps amps on the S20 going all the way up to 5,000 milliamps on the S20 Ultra. And then these phones could have displays that run at 120 hertz as far as the refresh rate. So I was a fan of 90 hertz refresh rate phones last year. So I'm going to be a big fan of these and we'll see if they can definitely manage the battery life on those. And then as far as storage, you can see 128 gigabyte storage being the standard with 512 being an option on the S20 Ultra. And then also all three could have a micro SD card slot, which will allow you to upgrade to one terabyte of storage. And then also you could get 12 gigabytes of RAM as a standard on all of these phones as well. And so if Samsung is able to deliver on 80% of the stuff that is rumored so far, I think they're going to be having some phones that are gonna be great year round because sometimes we find with like the S10, it was a great phone, but we weren't really talking about the S10 in like October and November of last year. But I think that's gonna be different, especially with the S20 Ultra because it's gonna be really hard to beat that phone spec for spec. And I can see some phones kind of matching some of them, but Samsung is throwing everything in the basket for this phone and I can't wait to see it. Now, a phone that could be announced shortly after the S20 lineup is going to be the OnePlus 8. Now, I'm really looking forward to this phone because this phone could have a 120 hertz refresh rate as far as their display as well, which is going to be great. And then also too, they could be approving the photo and video capabilities of this phone because that is a big focus of OnePlus this year. Now, unfortunately, we won't be seeing that cool new camera tech that OnePlus showed off at CES this year inside of their Concept One phone. And this had rear facing cameras that were able to actually be hidden behind a layer of glass and so it's really cool to see in person, but it was actually functional as well because that layer of glass could act as an ND filter for the rear facing camera. So yeah, we're not gonna see that in the OnePlus 8, but with the OnePlus 8, OnePlus just really needs to continue what they've been doing over the last few years, and that is release a phone that has really solid specs and then also, too, has a really aggressive price point, and I think they will do that with this OnePlus 8. Now, you know I can't make this list without mentioning the iPhone, but we are a ways away from seeing the new iPhone, so there's not a lot of rumors and stuff about those phones just yet, but we could see the introduction of 5G, at least in the pro models of the new iPhone, so that would be interesting, but Apple just really needs to continue on their good base that they had in the iPhone. 11 Pro and the iPhone 11 as well. And that is a great camera with great battery life. And I made a video talking about those things, so check that out if you haven't watched that yet. But I think if they continue on that and just really add some cool things with the software with iOS, I think they will have another phone that's gonna be hard to beat as well this year. But now let's get to the type of smartphones that I'm really interested in the most this year, and that is foldable phones. And if you know me, you know that I'm a big fan of the Galaxy Fold. I think this phone is great. It's a totally different experience that I've ever had on any other type of smartphone. And I think that if Samsung is able to release an actual follow-up to the Galaxy Fold this year, I am going to be very happy, especially if they add a bigger screen on the front and actually have the uh, main screen, the foldable screen, be made out of glass. So you could possibly use the S Pen to add more functionality. But look, we haven't really heard a lot of news about that, but I'm excited for that. But a phone that we are highly likely to see this year launched alongside the Galaxy S20 lineup of phones is the Galaxy Z Flip. Now this phone has a foldable glass display, but it will be in the clamshell type of uh, format which is like a flip phone so you open it up and then now you have all display there and it should be a pretty long display by the looks of it uh, but then also too when you close it up you're going to be protecting that screen it's going to be in a really nice compact form factor but this phone will have some competition with the Motorola Razr which is already out for sale and that costs $1,500 but the specs of that phone don't look like it's going to really stack up well to the Galaxy Z Flip's rumored specs so we'll see how that plays out but if Samsung is able to release that Galaxy Z Flip at a better price point than the Motorola 
roller and also add better features, it's gonna be kind of hard to beat in this particular type of format. But also too, we're gonna to be possibly seeing some foldable phones coming from companies like TCL. They showed off a foldable phone that looks similar to the Galaxy Fold, um, but their whole main plan with that is to release it at a really good aggressive price point, something that may be $1,000 or less. And that's really gonna be bringing this foldable technology to the, the masses, at least for people who are willing to pay you know, around that price point instead of paying like the $2,000 price tag that's currently for the Galaxy Fold. And then finally, I think we're gonna be seeing phones from all of these companies that are gonna be released around the six, seven, eight hundred dollar price tag that are gonna be bringing specs that make everybody happy because I think the market has spoken that a lot of people don't wanna pay over a thousand dollars for their phones. So they have to release phones for a lower price point to really make it attractive to people so they're not waiting three, four, or five years to upgrade. So we will be seeing that this year as well. But anyway, this is my list of smartphones that I'm looking forward to the most in 2020. What are you looking forward to? Leave your comment down below. And also make sure you do subscribe and hit that notification bell because I will be covering all of these phones as they start to get released here very shortly. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But like always, I do wanna thank you for watching this video and I will catch you later. Peace.